Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe. Aloha, everyone. We are continuing our series of rascals, of heroes, rascals, and duds, the story of the people who made Hawaii, contemporary Hawaii. And the episode that we are on uh, deals with the Hawaiian Renaissance, and actually, more correctly, the period between about 1970 and 1978. And um, one of the, uh, and, and we have for you three outstanding guests uh, who were here two weeks ago, actually, since this is the encore, and encore performance of this particular uh, series. Uh, we have the professor from the University of Hawaii Law School, Troy Andrade, a very uh, prominent Hawaiian businessman, Waters Martin, and of course, Stephen Morris, who is, uh, who is an author as well as a uh, director of a nonprofit and is a, a lifelong uh, advocate for uh, Native Hawaiians and for those that need uh, assistance. So today, you know, I, I thought I'd start off with uh, the story. We were just talking about him, actually. But in, <clears throat> in the 1968 Constitutional Convention, uh, James Bacon, actually, uh, who was uh, an activist uh, about that time, a Native Hawaiian uh, that was a delegate to that convention, uh, introduced a uh, introduced a motion. It was very minor. Maybe Troy, you might pick this up, but he, it, it was very minor. I mean, it said something along the lines that uh, the state of Hawaii should support. Uh, Native Hawaiian issues or do a better job with Native Hawaiians or something along that line. And, and he wanted some kind of language introduced in this Hawaii state constitution. And he was basically laughed off the floor. I think he got about a dozen votes or something out of the entire convention. And yet, I think what's most prominent is 10 years later, in 1978, the world turns upside down. So maybe Troy, you can tell us a little bit about what you know from your research about uh, this whole episode in 1968. Yeah, so the 68 Constitutional Convention was just very different than the 78 Constitutional Convention in terms of the demographics of the folks that were involved, the delegates that were involved. So you had in 1968, I think about a third of the delegates were actual politicians. The other two thirds were somewhat affiliated with the political establishment at the time. In 1978, you have, I mean, they commonly called it the People's Convention because there was just an active campaign to ensure that the convention represented the people and wasn't inclusive of a lot of politicians. So in 78, you had seven out of a hundred something that ended up being politicians that, that were politicians that ran at that convention. But in 68, Bacon was, he was laughed off the floor um, for this really simple, the language is, I have it here, he wanted in the constitution language that the state would preserve and enhance the heritage and culture of the Hawaiian people and encourage continued support of Hawaiian traditions. If that is not the most broadest, you know. Pretty vanilla, pretty vanilla, pretty right? Pretty vanilla language about enhancing Hawaiian culture and in, in the minutes, he goes on and he talks about the injustices against the Hawaiian people, outlines it, the overthrow, sort of one by one, and he's laughed off. And this motion does not get carried by uh, the delegates in 68. Ten years later, whole different story. Well, you remember James Bacon, right, uh, Steve, or, 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 or Waters, either one of you. Uh, he, he was uh, one of the founding members, uh, as you pointed out, of Aloliki. Waters, I'll let you go. No, I don't remember. I remember him. But today, there was something on, online somewhere. I don't know it was Facebook. But there was something about this that incident. Hmm. It was it Civil Beat? There was something. And I was wondering who, you know, who, who he was. Well, he, he was... Uh... You, uh, he was one, he along with Winona Rubin, Alvin Shim, 
uh, who was Pono Shim's dad, and um, Pinky Thompson uh, all started uh, Aluliki together. Uh, Steve, you were around back then, and you I, you actually were part of that. About 1974-75, they organized an effort to get um, federal, basically federal recognition, yeah, and in order and to to add basically Native Hawaiians to the um, Native American programs that were being made available to tribes. So in order to organize that whole effort, they formed Alulike Inc. in about 1975. And this is a unique group of uh, group of Hawaiians because they were what you would call the uh, the people who made it <laughs> in a way, you know, because you, you think I, I, James Bacon was uh, pretty pretty active. Uh, Alvin Shim was a major uh, labor lawyer. Winona Rubin actually was pretty well known for her work in uh, social work. Pinky Thompson was son of the right hand person for Governor uh, Burns. Uh, Go Burns. Burns. He was he was director of the Department of Human Services for several years under under John Burns. And and he also was the dad, as we all come to yeah. find out, he was the dad of uh, Nainoa Thompson. They were but, you know, they were some real power brokers in that on that board. <laughs> And, and they were beginning to take up this issue about Hawaiian uh, activity. Actually, uh, James Bacon became prominent even before Aluliki with the, I think it was called the Congress of the Hawaiian People, or Congress of Hawaiian Organizations or something that started a little earlier than in the early 70s uh, as a reaction to, um, to the appointment of Betsy Takabuki to the Bishop of State. Uh, does anyone recall any of that uh, people that were involved in, in that uh, effort? I, um, I, the, it basically, um, Kahu uh, Abraham Akaka was a, a leading proponent for the organization. I, I think he was approached by 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 Jimmy Bacon and others in the community to sort of spearhead that's right um, and an advocacy initiative against the uh, appointment of 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 Matsy, um on the grounds basically on the grounds that you know it was time to appoint a native Hawaiian to the to become trustee that we so had what? qualified we had qualified native Hawaiian so by 1974, we really had at least four organizations that we have discussed becoming quite prominent. I mean, the first would have been the Hawaiians uh, working, which was the statewide organization originating in, in Waimanalo. The Congress of the Hawaiian people who uh, reacted. And, and so I think what we begin to see is we begin to see the spectrum of the Hawaiian population. Uh, being uh, introduced. And then we, we have the uh, Aluliki, which is uh, was pretty much a, the first nonprofit, the first nonprofit that was established for Hawaii. And, um, and uh, uh, Luisa Rice of the Aloha movement. So this is uh, by, by 74. And 74 is also when we see the beginning that we discussed earlier of the uh, Parker Ranch, taking over Parker Ranch. And I, as you can see though, this, all of this is sort of coming together. Um, does anyone recall any of the early meetings that we, I remember there was a lot of statewide meetings that we were, we were having. The, the, the meetings, um, I mean, around, the, the the activism i mean i mean among all of these different organizations um created a lot of kuka kuka yeah a lot of conversation about you know um where we were where we want to be set some goals and priorities 
and I and I think at at one point, um, uh, we know no Ruben and the Alulike folks stepped in and said, "Hey, why don't we have a bunch of a series of of what they called Puvalu in the in the beginning, um, and that transitioned into larger ahas as they as they call them and um, so we had these statewide meetings and people would come from all over. I remember I was living on Hawaii Island at the time working for the Lily Okalani Trust and out in Lower Puna and, and I would make it and make an effort to fly in as often as I could to Honolulu to try and attend these meetings because the the discussions were so rich, yeah, so rich. I mean, what, it was what, like no holes barred. I mean, our it was like take take the thinking caps off and just go, you know. What What and, was really interesting was that they, they what was the intensity of the meetings, but wow. there was no um, personality conflicts. I mean, I don't know how to say it. There, nothing. Everybody walked out, uh, sort of Hawaii. You know, we went in and there, everybody had their ideas, but there were uh, there wasn't a situation where you had the Hawaiians taking on uh, the Aloha movement. Well, if anything, they were sort of mutual response. Our, our mutual our mutual rule at these meetings was we can agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, to show you, to continue with the evolution of all of this, um, it was also right about that time in Waters, your buddy, uh, um, John Dominus, got together, uh, uh, started to talk about the need with other people of becoming political. And he got together with, uh, 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 with the Maurice Oshiro from Lilio Kalani Trust, Masaro. And they and they we started this the home rule movement. Home you remember rule. the home rule movement? <laughs> you, 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 okay, you haven't said much. So what you gotta get into the home rule movement because a lot of the people that I remember you used to be uh arguing with in the corner uh, all came in at the same time, you know. One thing I was thinking about going back, you know, with the Takabuki, what they call the Takabuki incident. Yes, you know, Kwaihao Church, Kahuakaka, that was where everything took place. And that's where Pinky Thompson came down and tried to, you know, get the Hawaiians to calm us down. From there, we went, remember, we marched around Kimemehe's <laughs> Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes. And Sammy Amalo made fun of us. <laughs> but and also, off the, off the trash, you know, they went in and they created, they went into court. And they tried to, uh, they were trying to locate the beneficiaries, but anyway, they took it to court. And I don't think they got, they didn't get far, but Arthur Trask talked about in the 1940s, before I was born, that there was a time that, it's not the first time Hawaiians were saying, you know, we, why can't you find a Hawaiian trustee? Now, I don't know if the person, last thing was Miller, because we, my family did not go to Kamehameha, so I have to ask, you know, who was the trustee, but, Author said he did not help you know, much. But what is interesting, while you could complain about, speak out about Takabuki, it was, it was acceptable. And then, you know, a few years later, Project Koho Olave comes along and the various peoples that were comfortable with Takabuki, that issue, were not comfortable with the Project Koho Olave people. You, you know, a lot of people stepped away and yet, you know, yeah, it, it was a constant of stepping away, coming together, stepping away, coming together. You know, if I if I remember, um, and the the Taka the Taka Kamehameha schools uh, really created that whole issue, created the idea of Hawaiian Hawaiian things to be run by Hawaiians, and that was what the right. what the, what the uh, the Hawaiians were trying to do with homesteads. That's what Takabuki, uh, the Takabuki thing really meant. It wasn't so much a Matsi. It, well, everybody back then knew it was an inside appointment. I mean, the governor's best friend from the consul gets appointed. 
And, right, and there was a uh, million dollars. Didn't they get a million dollars a year? I mean, there was a huge amount. Of not then, not then. Because you remember one of the first, and this is when Nancy becomes popular. Because what happens, Nancy steps into a trust that's essentially land rich and money poor. Right. In the beginning of the 70s, he comes in there and he kind of changes all of that uh, and, um, and turns it around uh, by, uh, by having to sell some land. And <laughs> you see, we begin to see how these things clashing, right? Because some of the lands that they were selling earlier than that was Kalama Valley, which caused the first protest and then the lands after that. But then Mansi starts to get the get the trust uh, richer. And, and then we see the state pass uh, under Governor Ryoshi, pass something called the le leasehold conversion law. And then the Hawaiians go a little bit crazy uh, about, uh, and, and so now we're all on the same side because we're on the side now with the, with the trustee. Um, but you know, I, and, recall, and, I, I recall, I um, recall, the Congress of Hawaiian people and, and the Home Rule Party meetings being the, the, the first time that I can recall us thinking about political organizing. Absolutely. Um, home, the Home Rule Party wasn't long lived, but there, there were aspects of the conversations at these meetings that, that talked about, you know, um, organizing, running, running our own candidates, uh, voter registration, those kinds of things were being discussed. And what was really cool about Abraham Okaka was that through Kauai Ha'o Church, he had access to the resources of the United Church of Christ. Yes. And the United Church of Christ is one of the more progressive of the uh, Christian Protestant Christian churches across the country, right? And they had nationally, they had a commission on racial justice and, and Kahu Akaka talked them into sending community organizers to Hawaii to begin doing some training. And I recall being in the training for about 10 weeks, um, a Reverend Bill Land, you remember him, the Reverend Bill yes. Land? Uh, he was uh, African-American from, from Chicago, and he came and talked about all the precinct organizing they were doing to try and get um, um, Blacks into um, county offices and, and precinct offices in Chicago as an effort to... Um, um, oust uh, Mayor Daly at the time. You know, Mayor <laughs> Daly was like, he was like the Taisho, you know, at the time in Chicago, right? Yeah, he was the political Taisho and um, he he tried to keep all of this down. So th there was some pretty intense community organizing and political organizing going on in Chicago that the Reverend Land brought and discussed as part of the training that he was doing here. So Gov, if I can jump in about, oh, sorry, go Waters, go for No, no, no. Go, go ahead, uh, uh, Troy, okay, go ahead, jump in. No, I was gonna say, I wasn't around uh, during this time, but from my sort of looking at all of this, it really was the, you know, Alulike and the Council of Hawaiian Organizations and their Puvalu sessions that really brought everything together. You know, all of these different moving pieces that was happening that we've been talking about all came together in these Puvalu sessions. And from there, they created kind of a platform. I mean, just some priorities that the that Hawaiians would now have moving forward, which then served, I think, as the, the framework for moving into 1978 and the Constitutional Convention. You're absolutely right, Troy. What about uh, what is you going to add something to all of that? I remember, you know, that I didn't. Well, there was that person that came from, I guess, Chicago, and who was black, and he was telling, you know, trying to train Hawaiians how to deal with <laughs> demonstrations. So you get the kupuna out and the keikis out, and 
the police get in your face. But of course, <laughs> it's different because the police were kind of related to everybody at that point. But there was that march, you know, to, through Waikiki. And, you know, my, in fact, my aunt, Lavanna Crab, you know, who was very conservative, <laughs> she was, you know, she, we, she went with my mother. I mean, we all walked that. That was one of the demonstrations. Well, you know, uh, you see, now we begin to see coalesce, and uh, these things now come together with three things that we have sort of thought. One was uh, Honokohau, which gave some of us uh, the beginning of a spiritual experience. The other one was the fact that one of the people at Honokohau was Herb Connie. In fact, we had a bunch of Hawaiian, uh, prominent Hawaiians working on Honokohau. You had George Kekulani, who was at I think uh, his daughter was uh, was one of the protesters. Yes, and, uh, yes. Terry, but Terry. George was uh, George was a uh, was architect. Was architect. Architect. And, and then you had Herb Connie. You had Richard Richard Capolo Lu. Richard Capolo Lu, who who did all of um, this stuff. And then um, Ala Roy did all of the um, oral oral history for that area, going around interviewing. All of the, the old Hawaiians used to live there and she would interview them in Hawaiian. She, she and that, that, that kind of activity falls right into uh, the Patekaho Olave Ohana. Yeah. Because they start to do the same thing. I mean, Daviana McGregor, Emmett Alule, obviously Walter Riddy. Well, Walter was kind of a strange character, though, and, and maybe I should talk about him since he's Ohana, you know, and he might forgive me sooner than somebody else. But, uh, <laughs> but the, he's a purdy you know, man. He's a purdy purdy just like you, you know. We're, like <laughs> so we are, you know. Walter was Walter was kind of in his different drama because Walter was what you would consider an activist activist. He, he, he didn't like to spend a lot of time knowing why these things were, need to be done. He just wanted to go do it, you know? Uh, so he, and, and so here, he, in fact, I'll tell you a story about Walter, which I, I tell all the time, is that I remember going to this uh, Protect Olavi Ohana meeting and um, everybody was sitting around talking about, you know, when we're gonna do the next, uh, whatever the activity was, an invasion or something. And somebody says to Loretta, Walter's wife, you know, where's Walter? Oh, he already went to the island, you know. <laughs> 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 you know what was going But there was a lot of these kinds of things that started. The canoe taught us the pride uh, and then the spirituality that came with the kupunas at the, with the ohana and with honakahau. All of this gets added to the what was happening at the Puvalus. And so now well, we're the, right. John, the Puvalus also helped develop the leadership that went into the convention as well. Anti Frenchy, Anti you know, and the participation of her in the in Kaho Lobby and in the Puvalu. Um, we had, you know, it was um the development of leadership, you know, was, was so key, you know, to it all. You know, what was interesting about the, so it, the convention itself is that um, we had actually very few Hawaiian delegates. For some reason, despite all of this activity and this, despite the fact that we started the, with the home rule movement for us as Steve pointed out for time, and, and some people actually ended up running. Daryl Iona became no. a long time uh, Board of no. Education member. No. Uh, other people started running. There, there wasn't that many people running for seats in the uh, convention. And so what, what, what was exciting was the fact that anti Frenchy got to be, or Frenchie De Soto got to be, um, got to be chairman of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. Now, meanwhile, people were going to jail as a result of Kahola. Yes. I think, I think uh, Walter, I, I remember the, the, the trial, I defended uh, Charlie Warrington, yeah. 
was poor innocent Charlie, you know, he, he was the nicest guy you ever want to see. Oh, yeah. But he was determined to uh, determined to uphold himself. So he gets, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if he got concussed. I think he did, you know, for a short while. And, and, and thing. But we get to the con con. Frenchie becomes... Frenchie becomes a uh, chairman and she reaches back and she pulls all this rich history you're talking about, Steve, all these leaders into the convention. I, I mean, were you there? You you were, at, you helped her at the convention, if I remember. I, I actually, that was like more like Francis Kauhani and- Francis Kauhani. I, I was busy getting into trouble on the big island I was getting into trouble with geothermal energy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> geothermal I, energy. I, was, I, I the, the Democratic Party didn't like me because they wanted, they wanted to, they wanted to fast track the development. And I, and I kept telling them, you can't do that. You got to study the social cultural impacts first, you know, on, on Native Hawaiians. And they were like, they were like one track mind. And I would go to hearings and, and just like Jimmy Bacon, I would get laughed out of the hearings, you know, on the big island. So I was spending most of my time there trying to, you know, organize, organize people to, hey, at least get some more research done. So I didn't get involved that much in the actual, um, actual process of the of the convention and what happened with the um, the dealings within the uh, the Hawaiian Affairs Committee but well, you, I had, had, you know yeah, people yeah. like Walter Walter Reedy um, Walter Reedy was Milimani there Trask was a real active right Milimani Trask was all with with this thing um Stephen Kuna Steve, Steve Kuna. Kuna had come back from law school from the yeah, Continent from Howard. Sunday. He was at Howard. And he he were, he really spent a lot of time with Anthony Frenchy. Yeah. And uh John, you know the Francis Galhani, our buddy Francis, because he was yeah. in the everything, right? Starting from the Hawaiians all the way through. But Francis, Francis was Francis was active long time during the Renaissance. Oh, he did, was he did a lot. He did a lot. I think and, Walter, and it, I think ahead, Walter Walter got involved to some extent in some. I think at at Anti Frenchy's pleadings, Walter came and and offered some of his advice at the at the convention. But you're right; he wasn't much into to the into. He wasn't much into the, and the content and all of that. Yeah. You know, he just liked to do, it. which meant that what are you when Walter used to used to see Walter doing all the time was walking the halls getting signatures on various resolutions when yeah 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 that when was really i mean that really important that convention <laughs> was that convention was so critical in terms of where we are with hawaiian language with the olelo right now with hawaiian homes and 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 sunny championing all of the hawaiian homes amendments at the well, sunny came by the convention I think yeah, yeah. most people don't realize that um, that uh, the convention it, that each every one of the Hawaiian groups we mentioned actually ended up having an amendment placed in the constitution. And, These and came out of we, the ahas and the pubalos. And I think we have to mention the OHA amendment, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs amendment. You know, whatever people might think about OHA, good or bad. It now it now is the trustee for close to five hundred million dollars in assets for Hawaiians right now, which yes. you know, that's, I think that's, one of the, that's yeah, a considerable yeah. trust. You know, one of the other uh, rascals that is not getting enough credit, I think, in this conversation right now is actually John Waihe, uh, <laughs> who. Because if you think about the, the convention, if you look at the legal documents that came into the convention for Hawaiian affairs, they're only focused, the Legislative Reference Bureau was only focused on Hawaiian homes. That's all the Hawaiian issues that would be addressed. And it was Governor Waihe'e in talks with Auntie Frenchie, 
and sort of all these other organizers that came together and said, you know what, we're going to do something else and we're going to bring all of these ideas and we're going to make it happen. And Gov, you have some really but, but, fascinating yeah, stories. Yeah, and, and with something <laughs> was, with your show. But that was really it, hard for you, John, because you had to deal with with that um, plantation Luna named Bill Beatty, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and someday, someday we're going to get, but there were so many interesting people that don't get credit, don't get credit. You know, I, like we just mentioned Francis, and you know what Francis, Francis had, Francis used to be always in the back of the room, he'd be smoking with his cigar, and he would be watching how everybody <laughs> voted, you know, on the Hawaiian affairs issue. And he would check him out. I'll tell you another non-Hawaiian to a couple other non-Hawaiians that uh, who, who became very central to the Hawaiian uh, uh, provisions was uh, John Pennybacker from the oh. Fabulous Five. John yeah. Pennybacker was anti frenchies vice chairman. Oh, and I let me tell that. you, yeah. And let me tell you, if you ever said anything negative about it, about Frenchy, you would get a visit from this six feet, seven inch <laughs> guy to give uh, to discuss your decorum, you know, and, and your respectability. The uh, other person was Charlene Ho. Calvin Charlene Ho's Hull. wife, yeah. Charlene Ho. Yeah. Oh, fabulous person. The whole yeah. water, everything to do with water came from Waiholi Waikani. Yeah. And they were really Absolutely. carried by, by and Charlene Ho, and we go back to the Kalahiki brothers, and uh, Randy, and, and all of them, you know, Michael, yeah. Pete Thompson, Pete Thompson. You know what is interesting? What I remember was the day that the convention was going to vote on whether Hawaii should have statewide initiative was the day that the your grandfather uh, Troy and the other uh, other Hawaiians and I think Steve you were with them occupied the airport in Hilo yes oh it took a I wasn't in the big one where they marched on the landing strip I, I was part of the initial one where we we uh, we had a convoy that locked up the whole the whole um, road going around the Hilo terminal. We we had we, we organized enough cars, convoy of cars, three lanes going around the entire oval, so nobody could get in and out of Hilo Airport for like three four hours. And, and, that, and that that this these these are the kinds of things that were happening when the con con was going on that actually had an influence in the con con and with people passing and, and you know we wasn't it was almost like uh Aku was looking out for us you know you know like, i uh, <laughs> i i didn't participate in the in the in the uh, the occupation of the landing strip when they knocked down the gates in keokaha and that whole mob of people came on because I, oh, you know, I was, I was really afraid that somebody would get hurt. Uh, you know, I had just come from losing my, my two friends, George Helm and Kimo Mitchell. Who we need to talk Kahoa about. Lave, right? Lave, absolutely. They, they went missing at sea in 1977, right? And, and right after that, um, I was asked to help organize the, the, the landing strip um, occupation, but I, I didn't have it in me to do it. I, I just felt that it was too dangerous, you know. Um, I, I, knew, I knew the governor was going to call out the National Guard, and there would be a confrontation that would come this close to being very volatile so i kind of stayed out of it but but our convoy it, was lots of fun man <laughs> <laughs> you know but it but it worked because the way that sort of translated back into the uh pete thompson gave a speech here 
in, uh, at the convention where he talked about the fact that someday, if we're not careful, we are going to lose initiatives because they have more money than us. But the one thing we can do is vote with our bodies. And yeah. that's happening, you know? And so anyway, th these things all were in the same realm, you yeah. know? And, and A little sidebar, John, about Pete Thompson. Later on in his life, he became a broker for Morgan Stanley. Do you know? And a that? very good one. A very, a good, very broker. good one. Yes. There was something I had. In fact, I had a friend of mine that said that the best capitalists are people who were former communists because <laughs> all they all they did was study economics. You know. And, 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 but he Pete, Pete was a real character, man. He was. Oh man. What. One of the guys we didn't talk about, which uh, as, uh, and we're running out of time, is that uh, is is George Helm. And uh, you know, you you brought him up, and George was George was special. I mean, they, you know, he um, he was like above above all of us at the time that we were doing all of this stuff. I mean, he he had a vision that was. Um, yeah, we he had. Was, he, was, he was smart. He was handsome, charismatic. He could sing the lights out, you know, and play music. Um, I always thought that he could, and I write about it, you know, that I always thought that he could galvanize Hawaiian people just through his music, like, like Gabby and Eddie Kamai, and and later on, Brother Is did, you know, through his music, yeah. But one we, of the, we will never know. Yeah, we will never know. No, one of the most uh, for me, one of the one of the great moments in, in my life was on the beach at uh, McKenna. Oh no, in Hana. We remember with Hana, we had a luau in Hana for the Hana, and and he after the luau he he, start, he sang in the gym, and boy, that if you want to see a unified group of people just listening to this music, yeah. completely committed. Uh, it, it was special. Well, anyway, a couple, got, of, couple of his concerts, one in one in Kanakakai and that I remember and one on at Vedina Stadium on in on Kauai, you know, fabulous. Yes. Talk about, I mean, inspiring, you know, he'd get up there and he would he would not only sing; he would talk about the stories around the the backstories of these, of this music that I was he was singing, and and some of the protests that was in the in the songs, the traditional songs he sang, you know. And and the, why the Hawaiians sang what they did because he yeah. would be pulling all these old old songs out, you know. Inspiring. Okay, our time is actually over, so. Steve, you got any last words? And then I'm going to go to I water. Think I spoke too much already. Water, you got any thoughts? Anybody we missed? Anybody special you want to mention or, or anything? I, mean, I was thinking about Francis Kaohane. You know, I haven't seen him in decades. <laughs> he's, in, uh, he's in Pu'u Kapu, Waimea. He's in Waimea. Pu'u Kapu, he's, Waimea. I think his daughter he has, a, he has a, the, um, a Hawaiian homestead pastoral lot. In Pu'u Kapu, Waimea. That's oh, what the the I heard. By the way, a part of the story, you know, for cutting the fence, the gate uh, uh, with the Hawaiians, people should know that uh, one of the people that eventually got a got a, a pastoral lot out of that had the last name Kaniho. So yeah. none of this actually was just wasted, you know. So no. What is anything else? I was thinking about Auntie Peggy Hao Ross. Wasn't she, didn't she oh. lead the group on, onto the tarmac all in her whites and very dramatic? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> she was. You know, the kupuna have never failed us, you know, over right. and over again. And, and she had a daughter, Lily Uokalani, that was very outspoken as well. And I think, and... Uh, I think Lily Wu is still active. Um, with um, uh, stopping the bombing at Pohakuloa right now on Hawaii Island. Mm. So yeah, us, us old activists, we never die, you know. <laughs> we haunt right. you. We, 
we haunt you the rest of our lives. <laughs> okay, with that, with that ball pass, uh, Troy, you got it for uh, any kind of closing remarks. Um, all I'll say is this is, you know, really great conversations, and I'm glad this is recorded. Um, a lot of the things that were happening in the 60s and 70s, I see happening today. I you says all kind of repeating itself, right? Like I see Mauna Kea as the, the Kaho'olawe, right? I see all of these issues with Hawaiian language coming back to the forefront, right? And I, I think it's exciting for young people to watch these kinds of conversations, to learn about the convoy, like strategies for how you shut down places. Yeah, they, <laughs> they're better they were... organized and better planned than we were. They learned from yeah. our mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, thank you so much for uh, Hello, everyone. God, God bless you all. God bless. Take care, Aloha. everybody. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.